Hey, well, good evening. I'm Anna Werner, and I'm so excited to just, I, you know what's really funny, to be honest, if you ever do videos um, or ministry and you get videos about it and you get to watch yourself again, you see your tendencies and your mistakes. And you like it's really hard not to just beat yourself over the head over that. But I realize as I as I start videos, I always say I'm so excited, and it's a joke because even my assistant said we need to get you a T-shirt that says I'm so excited because <laughs> I always do that. But I truthfully like it's honest. Like I am truthfully very excited for this evening tonight. I have a good friend with me, Larry Sparks, and. Um, before I bring him on, I just want to speak about him. Um, he is the publisher of Des Destiny Image Publishing Company and as well just a really dear friend of mine. He see a lot of people do put him in put the hat on him as you know the the head or publisher. but um, Larry as well is such a, a man of integrity and as well carries such a message that is so needed for today. I've had the privilege of ministering with him and just him and his wife are just such a such a blessing to our family. So I'm excited to have him join me uh, this evening. And there's this all started. Guys, as you're jumping on, make sure you share this. I would appreciate that. Um, this is, we, we got a break. Listen, we got to be light in a dark world, right? And part of that is taking social media for the kingdom of God. Come on, somebody say hallelujah. So those of you who have a thing for media, I just pray impartation on you. Go ahead and press the share button so we can get this message out. Because this is going to be, uh, we, we both Larry and me just felt the fire of God um, already on this as we were praying um, beforehand. So I'm going to bring him on, uh, make sure... As well, I'm going to say this at the very beginning. Sorry, Larry, I keep saying I'm going to bring him on and then I pause. But make sure you're following the correct pages for ministers. I want to say that right now. There is an epidemic of scammers out there who try to clone pages and then personally message you asking you for finances, stuff like that. Both myself and Larry Sparks would never do that. So make sure you're I put the correct pages um, up on there so you can make sure you find the correct pages, follow our ministries, all that. But we're so excited to have you on here. Tell me where you're joining us from. I haven't seen. Okay, so I saw someone from Sydney, Australia. I cannot do an Australian accent. I wish I could. <laughs> My husband could. He lived in Australia for two years. I could try and it would just be horrible. Someone from the Philippines as well. Um, uh, Peru, come on. I'm so excited. Well, guys, let me bring him on right now. Here he comes. Here is, if I did this right. Hi, Larry. You did indeed. Hello. <laughs> Yay. <laughs> Breakthrough on technology um, for us both. Oh, yes. We've, we've both been learning, right? Yes, yes. I don't know. What is that good confession that you make? You don't say I'm technologically challenged. I'm blessed. I'm, I say I'm, tech, I, I'm technically blessed. Yeah, uh, I'm going to be confessing I, that too. That's a good one. I'm declaring that over myself. Well, Larry, I'm so grateful um, that you're joining me tonight. I really enjoy uh, prophetic chats with my friends that I mm -hmm. I really trust their sound voice right now. Um, and I know tonight this this all stemmed because I. I just I want to give you guys the backstory of why we're doing this tonight. Yeah. So what happened, Larry? I'm sorry. Did you want to share anything about yourself before I just dive right in? I'm no, like no, no. so excited. Let's, I'm diving right in. And that that's was all people need to know. Let's dive in. So make sure his his web like his Facebook is up there. You can follow him there. But um, so what happened is I was in my time with the Lord one morning and I heard the Lord very clearly say, Text Larry and ask him what just happened to him in Arizona. It's very important and his life has changed. And that was it. And I texted him and I said, what happened to you? And then from that conversation is basically what some of the things that I know that is burning on Larry's heart. And I feel like it's very important to hear for right now. And I have questions. 
I told Larry, like, we're not going to sugarcoat this. I want him to share what's burning in him. And then I have some serious, honest questions. And this is going to be a really uh, powerful night. I already feel the fire all over this. So I'm very excited about this evening, Larry. And I'm just so grateful that you're willing to share. Because, you know, sometimes when you go through something so powerful and life changing, you don't always have words to express um, what happened. I remember actually, I said, God says you don't have it all, the words for it yet, but you will. <laughs> um, so Larry, what happened? Start, let's start at the beginning. What happened to you? Well, you're hundred percent correct. I, I did not have the words at first. Um, bottom line, I went to church, Fresh Start Church in Peoria, Arizona. They are some new friends. They've got an amazing Assemblies of God church out there where for six years they have been in revival. Now, it hasn't been like mm -hmm. nightly meetings. I don't even think they ever did nightly meetings. I think they had a real breakout of the Holy Spirit, again, five to six years ago. And they made a commitment, not necessarily to doing extended meetings. There's nothing wrong with that. They made a commitment to, we are going to disciple a church of revivalists so that every time we come together, we experience this powerful measure of the presence of God. So I've been following them on and off. We have some mutual friends who have gone and ministered there. Jeremiah mm -hmm. Johnson, Corey Russell, Sean Smith, people that we published. So I said, okay, I got to figure this place out. Well, imagine going to a church when you go in the building. It's almost, people ask me, what's the church like? You go into the building and everybody explodes. Okay, that, that, might, be, that might be a little bit intense, but uh, I, I, I've gone twice. And the um, first time I went, I'd never been exposed to that kind of atmosphere before. It's something where I could tell that there is much prayer and intercession. And, and if any of you have gone on to Fresh Start Church online, YouTube, whatever, you'll, you'll recognize very strong in prophetic worship, in intercession, that type of thing. So I went the first time just to kind of get to know the pastors and leaders. Then I went the second time and they had me come up on stage and they prayed for me. Well, this tonight, this is not about me. This is something I believe God wants to release into the earth. This is why I think it's so important. This is why I'm so glad I have friends who provoke me to really seek the Lord. And actually the Lord has a word for somebody right now. It could be a few somebodies. Um, when you receive a prophetic word, don't be mm -hmm. quick. Um, when you receive a prophetic word, I, I feel like the Lord just wants to release this because Anna, this is what happened. The Lord is actually opening a conversation loop with you. Um, you know, sometimes what happens is we get a prophetic word and we really sense the Lord on it. Like I, mm -hmm. they, they called me up on stage. They prayed for me. I felt the power of God, like intense, weighty power of God. I had to kind of fall on my knees. Um, but I didn't quite know what was happening. And some of you who are watching, you might have received a legitimate, powerful, prophetic word of God, either from a prophet, prophetic person, or maybe from the Lord. And I want to encourage you, if you haven't figured it all out yet, that's totally fine. Um, but I, right. I feel like the Lord is saying, don't put it on the shelf. Um, that's, not, that's actually not good theology, just to put a prophetic word on the shelf. Trust the Lord with revealing the specifics to you. Trust the Lord with the time of manifestation. But do you know what you need to do? You need to keep praying into it. You need to actually keep talking to the Lord about it. Anna, I remember you using this as a wonderful reference about seeing in the spirit. Daniel, in Daniel, I believe it's chapter seven, chapter 10. He saw and he kept looking. Well, that's what happened. That's you kept it. You texted me and I'm like, oh my goodness. All right, Lord, I know I got something significant. I need to figure out what this means. And I, I, I bumbled around, but I'm like, do I, I feel like, Lord, is it being spiritually aggressive? I mean, that's the language that I came up with in the natural. And the Lord was like, no, 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 no. Um, that, that's, that's not it. Um, and I said, well, Lord, what are you doing? And this is what I sense the Holy Spirit spoke to me but it's relevant to all of us right now in this era, in this moment we're in. He said, I'm reintroducing my church to Pentecostal fire. That's what that church really carries. Oh. Uh, I believe there's actually churches right now, Fresh Start, Assemblies of God. Locally here, there's a church called Trinity Church here in Cedar Hill, Texas. Uh, Anna, you've been there where Cindy yes. Jacobs has done her thing. Assemblies of God as well. The Lord's actually raising up people right now. Man, I even feel this right now for those who are watching. If you are actually part of a traditional Pentecostal denomination, um, this is one of the words the Lord gave me, Anna. But, you know, sometimes with me, 
sharing prophetic words. I'm like, well, I think the Lord's saying this. I don't know. This is like, I know the Lord is saying this. So just buckle up your seat belt and receive this because I speak it with clarity and confidence. Come on. And I'm, re wow, I'm actually revisiting and re encountering those of you who have Pentecost in your spiritual lineage and DNA. If it's Assemblies of God, Foursquare, Church of God, Cleveland, a um, whole bunch of other Pentecostal denominations. Why? Because Pentecostals, that denomination for like the last hundred years, um, since 1906, probably before that, but 1906, you have the Azusa Street Revival. They paid a price for the power of the Holy Spirit. Um, I, I'm grateful for, we have like a lot of charismatic Pentecostal theologians now, and I'm going to turn it right back to you on. I'm just giving the context and I'm almost done. We have a lot of wonderful Pentecostal charismatic theologians. I think of Dr. Michael Brown. I think of Craig Keener. I think of Gordon Fee. I went to Regent University in, in Virginia Beach. So we have, we, we've come a long way, but there was a time, there was a season maybe 50, 60, 70 years where Pentecostalism, speaking in tongues, laying hands on the sick, the gifts of the spirit, they weren't just like controversial. They were downright rejected and churches were burned. People were called names. Uh, they were persecuted. And I feel like the Lord says, I remember the price that was paid for Pentecostal wow. fire. Uh, so many of us today who get to operate in these gifts of the spirit where there's so much wonderful teaching about it. I mean, even the fact that we have books on the seer and the seer's path and the seer anointing, like I think of Bill Hammond, Jane Hammond, the Hammonds who paid a price for the prophetic. Um, but yeah, I feel like the Lord is saying, I'm getting to revisit, huh? I'm revisiting those with Pentecost in their spiritual ancestry, and I'm reopening the wells of Pentecostal fire. Um, so I'll explain more of that as you ask questions, but I wanted to, that's what I feel like the Lord really released to me when those people prayed for me. Wow. Um, I'm so glad you shared that. Yeah. I, you know, Holy Spirit, <laughs> you know, we hear and see in part and all I knew was something <laughs> happened to you that changed your life. Literally what I shared is all I knew. Um, and then I was like, what happened? And then I went back and I saw some pictures of you, I think, laid out on the stage. Probably. And I went, oh, I know that. Like, oh, yeah, I've been there with the Lord before, just laid out under the weighty, thick oh. presence of God. So I want to start, yeah. go backtrack a little bit just to that. Um, do you feel that part of what God is trying to do in the church. And when we say church, I think Larry and me are in agreement. We're not talking just in terms of a four building structure, no. um, the church being the body of Christ. Um, so outside of the church walls, but do you think that God is coming in fresh waves of like that weighty thick presence? I'm, I'm seeing it personally, I will say in different areas, but is it that I have to, now, I know some of the answers to questions, but I think these are questions that people have. Do I have to go run to these areas where the weighty presence of God is coming? Or does uh, revival mm. and, and Pentecostal fire look different than it has in the past? Yeah, I know I'm, these are hard questions, but I really want to go after it tonight. So well, as you what are your me, thoughts? I'm, I'm getting hit by the glory. Do you know why? Because I can very, see. <laughs> <laughs> there's a very clear answer for that one. The reality is, and I, I want to speak to whoever's watching, you know, the mom, the dad, whoever's sit, just sitting at home, like, do I need to go somewhere? No. Do you know why? Because you are the person, you are the vessel that carries that Pentecostal fire of God. This has little to do without going out and somewhere and getting something. Now, is that helpful? It can be, but praise God for technology and broadcast media and all those kind of things. I mean, you can watch. I, I, I don't think it's the same as being there, but um, it was it was Tim Sheets, Dutch's brother, uh, who's mm -hmm. one of our authors, wonderful Bible teacher, who said this, and it so stirred me. He said, Larry, I see coming very soon a day with where within 20 miles of everybody in the United States, there will be a church that is on fire, that is experiencing revival, the move of the Holy Spirit. It's, it's normative. It's not the exception. In the 1990s, when you had Brownsville and Toronto and even Smithton in Missouri, it, it was a bit of the exception. It was so unusual and wild. People came from all over the world to these places, and I'm grateful. But even John and Carol Arnott, 
I think it was Carol Arnott who, who, from the Toronto mm -hmm. Blessing mentioned that even when that revival started in 1994, they received all these prophetic words basically saying, you haven't seen anything yet. Um, the Lord saying was basically saying, I'm interested, I'm going light or I'm going easy on you now so that when I come in my fullness, I don't scare you. And again, he's a good father. You know, I want to, I want to add that caveat, but scare, you know, I, I found myself praying a prayer like that recently on, I was like, Lord, scare me again. And again, not fear. We, we, we're so like used to like demonic fear. Um, but the fear of the Lord in the sense that God, that we would see mm -hmm. move in ways perhaps none of us have ever experienced. None of us have ever tasted. None of us have ever touched. But I believe we are introduced to that in scripture. That's first and foremost and foundationally where we go. That actually is what establishes the bar for what we should believe for. The Bible is the bar for what we believe for, what we press into. But then I love church history. In fact, I'm, I, that's, that's, that's why I can get nerdy and a little bit geeky with some of this stuff because that's what I got my degree in, church history and renewal. Mm -hmm. I love what I call non-charismatic, non-Pentecostal revivals because people can look at all the charismatic stuff from Azusa Street and the Ladder Rain and Toronto and be like, that's all charismatic or Pentecostalism, and that's wrong. You look at the history of the Great Awakening or the Second Great Awakening or the Cane Ridge Revival. I'm talking about evangelical revivals where you're Baptist, Methodist, Presbyterian, the mm -hmm. power of God. I, I'm even thinking right now of the Cane Ridge Revival. These revival yeah. meetings in Cane Ridge, the frontiers of Kentucky, like open air revival meetings where you had tens of thousands, multiple preachers all, all, just all over, the, all over the place preaching the gospel, not preaching some goofy, deviant, false, whatever, preaching the gospel, simple gospel. And it was preached with such force. They said people had to hang on to the trees because of the fire and the power of God. So I say, Lord, Lord, do it again. Lord, use each one of us. We don't need to go somewhere to get it. Uh, that can do something like it did for me. It can ignite something, but we are, we're carriers of that. I have a question for you. Yes. Are you the same? No, no. I've crossed the line of something. Like what has happened to you? Like, yeah. I, I think here's my, the reason why I'm asking that. Cause I know that Larry, when, what happened to me in Israel, which you guys, if, if you don't know my story, you can go. Um, I think I shared that on a Sid Ross show. Um, it's supernatural. But when I, I had an encounter where I was taken to the throne room and actually I was being baptized in the Jordan and um, I was wrecked by the power of God. Yep. And I remember that I for a while, if I would be honest, I didn't really know how to, <laughs> I, I mean, we yes, we were leading the tour and we're still kind of almost like pastoring over a group of people, if you will. But um, I came home and I went through kind of a time period of almost like two weeks where I'm like, I don't really know how to be right now. And it's a good thing. It's a good thing. Um, it's it's not like I couldn't love my kids and, you know, be with family members. But at yeah. the same time, um, when when a, a, where we're going with this is when a powerful move of God, like the power of God hits you at that kind of level. I, I don't believe you can be uh, I, I don't believe you can't not be transformed. I don't think you can't uh, be changed. Um, like Moses went up to the Mount, we know he went up to Mount Sinai and there's a scripture where it says he came down and, you know, they had to cover his head. Well, the glory was all over him. And I think sometimes when, when we have these powerful encounters of God, I mean, we are covered in him and we're laking him and we're not the same. So Larry, what, what has changed for you? Uh, you might be still in process. You might actually be like, I don't really know how to exactly be right now. But for you, how are you not the same? Well, if I had to answer that question, I think to, to follow that experience up, just this past weekend, I, I was ministering out with a lot of mutual friends of ours in California at mm -hmm. Cheyenne's conference, and Cindy Jacobs prophesied over me. And it was a very timely word for me. I'm like, okay, God, when you give all these prophetic words, it, it's never just so we can have more audios or a little more notes. Um, 
there, there's an assignment. Somebody needs to hear like those prophetic words yes. the Lord's given you. Those are assignments. Don't feel like, oh, okay, what do I need to do? Just talk to him. Just talk to him about it. Just like I've been processing. Well, what, what happened on it to kind of answer that question in part, because it's still in process. Uh, Cindy called me up <clears throat> and, prop, you know, as she does, she prophesied over me. I've seen her do that over you. And she carries, she, she's mm -hmm. a carrier. She is a carrier. She, yes. She's a prophet, but she's yes. a revivalist. Um, uh, so she I literally feel, I felt as she's prophesied over me, sorry, I didn't mean to interrupt, but I've literally felt fire coming no. towards me with my yeah. eyes closed. That's and I felt true. heat coming, literally, I felt heat coming through and I could feel it going through my bones. And I'm like, whoa. And as she came toward me, I mean, I, I had a similar experience. So yep. anyways, she prophesied over you. What, what, what happened? That's what happened. That literally, uh, you can see. What, what happened was this, and this is kind of the significant, now the word, I don't typically share, in fact, I've, I don't think I've ever shared a prophetic word that I've gotten. Um, I don't think it's wrong. I just hold those things very personally. But uh, my friend Lance Wall now, he, he captured it, he videotaped it, and he shared it on his Facebook. Oh, and, nice. Uh, Let's all go watch now. So Lance Wall knew on the, I'm just kidding. I'm well, you, well, here's the deal, though. It, it was like, I, could, I, I, you know, the thought of the one thought I had, because I felt that I was like electrocuted. Um, and, and you know me well enough to know it's like, well, I don't believe in hype. I hate it. I, I we, we don't want hype. We want the real thing. I want I want what's pure. Um, so of course I was starting to look through comments. Never look at comments on a video where you're getting zapped by the Lord because all sorts of people have all sorts of opinions. And I said, Lord, sure. should I just ask him to take this down? Was this inappropriate? You know, and, and the Lord said, No, in my basically I felt like the Lord said, In my sovereignty, I allowed this because wow, because you're because I'm calling my people to cross the line. I'm calling my people and I and I basically thought, Lord. This was what I said to God. It's so funny. I said, Lord, my last shred of dignity has been demolished. Um, and he said, yeah. Wow. Exactly. And, and, and it's it's like a praise God. It's a good thing. Yeah. Um, yeah. It's it's a, yeah. I, I had similar, I remember, Larry, and you remember this when I was in Israel. And Oh, yes. I mean, I was walking down the hallway in the hotel and trying to get to my room and just this presence of God hit me and nailed pinned me down to the floor and um, I couldn't get up for like mm -mm. A, like what is a ridiculous like amount of time and people are walking by being like is she okay and I'm like under the oh. manifest presence of God these women walked by uh -huh. I'll never forget because I was under the presence but I could hear everything around me and they were like is Anna okay? And they're like, oh, that's just Anna. She's just drunk in the spirit, in the spirit, mind you. She's yeah. just drunk in the spirit. She's going to be just fine. And I was like, God, I, I tried to say something and I couldn't even talk because the weighty presence was that thick. And I just thought, God, you don't even care anymore. I've lost all of my dignity. I can't even defend myself. It's all you. Yeah. And he's like, exactly. And he's like, I'm so glad you got it, Anna. And I'm like, you know, and I know that like, cause, okay. If you're listening to this, okay, let's backtrack. Yeah. Cause yeah. maybe you've never had an experience like what we're talking about. And these conversations can get scary for someone who's like, I've never, I, yeah. maybe I grew up in traditional church and, you know, I never experienced the power of God like this. How, what does that feel like? What is that? I mean, I have to, I have to think that somebody on here has maybe not a grid for what we're talking about. Um, so Larry, what is, when you felt like when you're talking about the weighty presence, like what is that physically, what is that like? What did you experience? What is, I'm just asking you questions. If you were like, explain it to me, like I've never experienced God's presence. What would sure. you describe that like? Physically, yeah. um, some of you have experienced God's presence, but you just experience it different and that's okay. So oh, don't yeah. feel like there's something wrong with me if I haven't been plastered on the floor. Um, it's okay. Like yeah. my husband, I remember we we're in <laughs> Mozambique, Africa, and we we're with Heidi and Roland Baker and I'm fish flopping on the floor <laughs> in the presence and he's standing like this under the glory and I'm like, 
is he okay? <laughs> God and God's like, Anna, he is stewarding something and receiving more revelation from me right now than you are. Don't worry about him. Just worry about and focus on me, Anna. So I just want to say that to those of you who are like, I, you know, that's not my relationship with God. I don't get plastered on the floor. Am I broken? No, you're no. not broken. Um, but Larry, what, what would you explain was that experience? Like, if you could explain to me, like, I've never felt the presence of God. What would you share that a little bit? Sure. Well, both of those experiences for me, and I, again, I love good theology. I like being intellectually honest. So I'm going to do my best to describe it non-Christianese. Um, it literally feels like uh, either a weight, like something is almost pushing you down, not in a bad way, but it's just heaviness. There's a heaviness, a glorious heaviness. Um, and I don't even know else how to describe it, a weightiness. But literally, that is the Hebrew word for glory. The Hebrew word for glory in the Old Testament is kabod, which represents a heavy presence, the heaviness of God. So it's absolutely profoundly biblical. I've had it where it's literally felt like electricity, kind of like, but not when your mm -hmm. uh, hand falls asleep. That thing, you know, that's obviously pins and needles, not comfortable, but it literally feels like a level of actual electricity in your hands. I've heard some people feel heat uh, on their hands. Some people's like head gets very hot. You'll literally watch them turn red. And again, none of this <laughs> is like, God hurting somebody. Here's the bottom line. Um, people are like, that's all the flesh. Yes, it is. Track with me. Yes, it is. It's the flesh. It's human beings, like body, responding to God. It's it's uh, So there's not one right way or wrong way to do it. Are there goofy people who want to like make a spectacle out of themselves? Yes. I've, yes. I've, I've, I've now. And, and it's look, false. It's yes. false manifestations. I've been at means where people started balking like chickens. And I was like, that's not God. I'm sorry. Um, because my discernment radar was going off. And I'm like, um, I'm sorry. Like, uh, that's not Jesus. But we're so. I'm glad he said that because I'm sure there's those of us who've experienced that too, but we're talking yep. about something that is not something you can make up. It's right. not something, nor would you want to make it up um, because you're not desiring attention. You have all your attention on him and he comes. Yeah. Listen, listen to me. Those who are listening right now, when Jesus walks into the room and he draws near to you, you are forever changed. Yep. And that's what this comes down to, all of this. Um, I just feel the weighty just, presence of well, God well, really thick right now. <laughs> I'm I, like, I, I, I do as well. Well, I, just to even go, go on what you're saying, because it's th there is a wonderful pre I actually feel like people right now who you're watching, um, and maybe you've never had that. I even see a few comments where it's like, I'd love to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Somebody said, I'd yeah. love to be drunk in the Spirit. Um, we'll, we'll, I, I like to be careful with language like that. Uh, that's biblical, actually, where it talks about, you know, the, the, the people on the day of Pentecost were accused of being drunk because they were so overwhelmed by the Holy Spirit. So I don't want to focus necessarily on that. But even now, as Anna said, I believe people who are watching and listening now or you're watching later, I believe the Holy Spirit just wants to touch you. And the good news is he's a personal God who touches people differently mm -hmm. because I've been in gatherings, as sure, Anna, you have been as well, where the, the person next to me legitimately looks like they are plugged into some sort of electrical outlet. And I know they're encountering God. And then the other person is weeping and they're crying. Um, mm -hmm. Same presence, same presence of God. Why are they responding differently? Maybe God is just being very personal as he is, and he's ministering right. to each person. As Anna said that, <clears throat> I, I believe the Lord, even right now as you're watching, he wants to walk into the room where you are. And uh, mm -hmm. I just thought of John, John the Beloved. We're watching the Chosen series right now. So John the Beloved Disciple, I'm thinking of him, how close he was to Jesus. And yet in the book of Revelation, when he experienced the resurrected Lord, it said he fell as a dead man. And I'm not implying at all we experience Jesus at that level, but here's the deal. Holy Spirit is the first fruits of resurrection. Presence and the power of the Holy Spirit 
testify continually that Jesus is alive. He is risen. He is also the he is Holy Spirit, but he's the Spirit of Christ. So we should not be surprised when the Spirit, wow, of the risen Jesus walks in a room, moves in a room, and touches people, and phenomena like that happen. Amen. Um, there's such an angelic presence in my office right now. <laughs> I'm I'm hoping I can continue talking, but I feel I what ha see it's 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 happening to me as as we're talking. Nothing like getting hit live. <laughs> but um, I, I'm just going to stop before I go on. I have so many questions, but I just have to stop. We have to stop for the presence right now. We just have to stop and, mm. and just, um, Lord, we just invite your presence on this live right now. Um, if you're watching, I, I just, I feel that even overseas, you're being hit and yeah. touched by the tangible presence of God. Father, I pray that you would pour out your spirit upon us, God. We are yeah. so hungry and desiring more of you. God, we're not after just an experience, God. Yeah. We are after drawing close and intimate with the living God. God, we want change and we want transformation in our nations and in the yeah. world, but it starts with us first, God. So I pray, let us be people that are wrecked before your presence, God, that we would bow down and lay down our agendas to stop for you and make room for you to move however that looks like, yeah. God, whatever that looks like in our house right now. Father, yeah. I pray that you yeah. would pour out your spirit upon family members right now. I just declare restorative marriages in the name of Jesus right now. I just got that word. He's restoring your marriage right now in the name of Jesus, yeah. God. I declare health to be released by your stripes. Um, they are healed in the name of Jesus. We are healed. So God, I just declare that healing over anyone who's needing healing over this right now. God, we just say, have your way. Have your way, God, pour out just fresh, 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 yeah. fresh fire in the name of Jesus. For some of you, you just feel the weight just yeah. fell upon you. Holy, 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 that's him. Huh. Holy, holy, that's him. Yeah. You're recognizing it. That's what it feels like. God, we just thank you, Lord. Yeah. There's only one appropriate response, and it's thank you, Jesus. Yeah. We love you, God. Thank you for everything you pour out that you poured out for us. We thank you, Jesus. Yeah, Lord, every whoa. I just uh, every wave. Every touch of his presence. Um, God, w w we don't make a memorial or a monument to these manifestations, but God, I, I, I love them because they show you're real. That's it. They show me, they, they are reminders when people are genuinely being touched by the presence. That's it right now. That's it right now. It's a t it testifies to the fact that he is alive. He's not a concept. He is not detached. He is not disengaged. Like that was one of the, well, one of the questions we were talking about before coming on. And I'm just going to answer the question because I know Anna wanted to ask it is like, how do you bring this down to 24 seven everyday life? I, I, I'll tell you, I'll tell you very simply. Well, <laughs> it's who, okay. Well, if I can, even as you're touched by the presence of the Lord, we don't like fly around in a glory bubble. Um, but we get touched. You know why? The Lord says this. Whoa. He's like, I want every touch to mark your memory. He's like, mm -hmm. I want every touch of my presence, every wave, whatever it looks like, whether you shake, tremble, fall, uh, whether you weep, just your awareness of his presence. He's like, I want it to mark your memory for when you're dealing with difficulty. Um, two, people deal with difficulty differently when they believe mm -hmm. and know I'm alive. I just feel the I, I feel the voice of the Lord speaking. He's like, that's it. That's 24-7 in, 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 in the grit of everyday life. He's like, listen, I want you to remember, even for some of you, like 
again, I, I have this burning in my heart for some of you, maybe even as children, you might be a bit older now. Um, we're all young in the Lord, but you might be a bit older, but maybe you had a really dynamic, wrecking, powerful encounter with God as a kid. And he's like, I, I didn't give it to you just as a memory. I gave it because I wanted it to mark your memory. When you're dealing, when you're going through the trenches of life, I want. The, I feel like the Lord wants you to actually uh, to redig wells of encounter, to redig those wells, just like uh, just like Isaac in the Old Testament had to redig the wells that the enemy covered up, that the Philistines covered up with dirt. Wells of inheritance from his father Abraham. Well, guess what? You have wells of encounter that are part of your spiritual history with God. And when we're going through the challenges of life, He simply wants to remind you. I'm not out in outer space somewhere. I'm the real God. I rend the heavens. I come down. Um, yeah, that's that's it. Come on. I have a question, um, Larry, if you can answer it. Yes. <laughs> um, it, it, the presence is so thick on this live that sometimes it's hard to. <laughs> that's another thing that happens to you when you get in his presence. It's not that you're mind becomes jello it's the you get more his mind the mind of christ yep. and so it's like i don't even know how to ask or answer things right now i just want to lay down in the presence right you know so but i i did have a question for yep. you um yep. places of um these outpourings that we've been to or you've been to yep. places of revival you your friends with john and carol are not um um, and I know they've talked about paying the price for it. And I, I have questions in terms of, um, I think there's those of us now as well who have had a few times come like powerful uh, mm -hmm. encounters, a few powerful encounters with God. Um, but what can we do to steward it? Like the places that I know that have, that are going on six years Oh yeah. Um, Todd Smith's another friend of ours who, yes. you know, his church is is going on years of baptizing now and having just revival. Um, and it's consistent and it continues con is continuation yeah. of just this manifest presence of God. So what does that look like um, for those of us at home that aren't traveling to these places? Yeah. How can we have this? continual revival within our own home like what are some of the steps to i don't know incubate this if you will yep that's a good question i was thinking of another one i was just watching a women's get well, well women's gathering but it was at a at the ramp of karen wheaton Catherine mullins <laughs> and they've been going and they've been going 20 years i know we're talking about some of these more recognized revivals but they've been going 20 plus years and there's still that I mean, I, I would say there's an increasing measure of the presence of God. I was watching that just getting wrecked. So what do we do to incubate this? I think it's really simple. I like it because I've studied <laughs> to the best of my ability, lots of revivals. And I do think there are some like quick practical tips. Number one, I think it's just making space for the Holy Spirit. That sounds so simple and it is. It's saying, Holy Spirit, you are my priority. And Bill Johnson gives the most wonderful example from his book, Hosting the Presence. Where he asks the question, how would you live if you had a dove on your shoulder? And we've, we've probably all heard this one. And he always corrects people because people often say, well, I'd live very carefully. I wouldn't want to make the dove go away. I wouldn't want to do anything to agitate it. And he said, that sounds right, but it's not. He said, I take every step with the dove in mind. Because if we live carefully, guess what? And we think, okay, I've got the Holy Spirit, but I don't want to make him fly away. I don't want to do this. I don't want to do that. We become more sin conscious and mistake conscious. And to be honest, mm. me conscious. And again, listen, we're supposed to live lifestyles of repentance. I'm not saying we don't focus on that. I want to be more focused on the spirit as opposed to me. I want to be more focused on the dove. And I love that example. And I love that description, taking every step with the dove, with the Holy Spirit in mind, because you know what? Wow. Shoot. Thanks, Bill, for an illustration that just wrecks you. But I, I'm even thinking, you know, it changes the way. And I, listen, I don't do this perfectly, but it does introduce a new, a, a new vocabulary to me because you know what I do? I try. I try. I try to say, Holy Spirit, the thoughts that I'm thinking about this person, do those thoughts make you comfortable? The words that I'm saying about this situation, 
Are they idle? Or, or do these words make you comfortable? Do these words host you? Because here, here's what I'm pressing in for. You know, you think of John G. Lake or Smith Wigglesworth or Catherine Coleman, and it's like, wow, man, those are the generals. Those are the mothers and the fathers. Well, a lot of them had setbacks. A lot of them had issues. Uh, some had relational failures. So you know, Smith Wigglesworth was a plumber and he was illiterate. But you know what? I don't think any of them had an edge on you and I. They were ordinary people that said, you know what? I'm going to see if the yeah. spirit of God who lives inside of me, who's the sign that I'm saved, I want to see if that same Holy Spirit can rest upon me. And I'm going to make space for him in every room of my life. I'm not going to hold back anything. And it goes right back to Anna. I think the great one of the great lessons I learned, and I'll, I'll go back to you here when we're in Israel, because I'll never forget that, that supernatural Passover thing we were doing. And uh, yes. I, I, I really thought the roof was going to rip off and because uh, and, yeah. God was just moving so powerfully. But the Lord really spoke to me and he said, Larry, there's not seven steps. There's not three keys to walking Come in on. greater glory. Exactly. He said, there's one, he said, there's one thing. It's Romans 12, one. We offer up our lives as living yeah. sacrifices. That means you offer up everything. You offer up your addiction, your bondage, your sin, not to a God who's going to smite you, but to a God who wants to send holy refining power and fire on your life. What a good deal. We offer up all of our stuff. And every yeah. time in the old Testament, an offering was made, a sacrifice is made, there is the promise. Well, there is the assurance that holy fire, Pentecostal fire, which by the way, Pentecostal is not a denomination. I know we think a Pentecostal church. No, we are all called to be Pentecostal people, which means a people who operate in the power that was released on the day of Pentecost. I would love to kitty off that if I could, because um, I think that it, it could be something as you hear this message and you may be like, well, I don't have a church like that around me that's um, just operating the fire and presence of God. And um, you know what? Be the church. Yep. Can I say that? Yep. Be the church. If you don't have that in your area, start one. I'm not saying leave your church. But get a like group or some people that are on fire for God together and maybe open your house up and, and just invite the presence. Read the word together. Yeah. Um, I, I, I'm going to be honest, and, and this might offend people. I'm not trying to offend you. Um, I so honor um, the generals that have gone before us, Larry, that have, you know, all these people that we all know that we read about their history books. I mean, I mean, I'm like, I'm so wrecked and undone and challenged um, by their lifestyle. But this is kind of the message that I've been carrying, as you know, Larry, for a while now, but it's all hands on deck right now, yeah. guys. Yeah. Like it's, it's no longer going to be, and it no longer is um, these select elite ones and, and I'm not bringing dishonor to them. I'm just saying yeah. um, right now it's you and I, um, everyday people being passionately in love with God and spreading his light to the world because look at the world right now. Come on. Yeah. Come on. Look at the world right now. It is dark, but we have the hope of Christ. Amen. So I, I am so on fire for God right now. And I hope you are too. I think, I think we all should be, and we all have a part to play right now. The Lord really showed me that one time. Um, he took me in and I had an encounter. I have an encounter where I saw this big banquet table. And I think I wrote this about this in seeing behind the veil, um, one of my books. Um, but there was this big banquet table and there was all these seats and there's this beautiful, beautiful table set. And it was like all this food, by the way, bread was there. Just saying uh, <laughs> for those who like carbohydrates and yes. bread, I'm sorry. I'm just throwing that in there. But, it. um, okay. So anyways, there was all this food and, and I saw all these seats and then I saw, and then, and then I saw people, uh, no, I heard, something under the table and Jesus took me under the table. When we went under the table, I was like taken into a different place, but there I saw people and it was not just kids. It was adults scrapping for crumbs and they had bloated bellies. 
Now, I've lived overseas in missions, and I know that bloated bellies usually mean malnutrition. It doesn't mean healthy always. It means malnutrient. And so people were scrapping. And I said, Jesus, Jesus, why don't they come up to the table? There's plenty of seats. And he said, they don't realize they have full access to my presence. They have full access to sit here and receive from me the best of the best of my presence. All that I have, all that I poured out on that cross, they can receive it all. So I just want to challenge you right now. You don't have to receive less than all that he has for you. You can receive everything. Everything we're talking about, the power of God is for you. And you are then to carry the fire wherever you go. Who knows? Maybe someday someone will write a story, your story. Yep. What about that? What if? And I'm not saying, oh, like, look at you. I'm not, I look at us. I'm... That's not, I'm just saying, it's time. Where are the history shakers right now? Right now, this now, that's me. You know, I'm always like, right now. But that is my message because, hey, I don't know how much time I have on this earth, God. Now I know God's shown some people. He hasn't shown me, but I'm thinking about my every day. What did I do today to make impact for the kingdom of God? Me and and I'm not pointing the finger at you. I'm I'm put, I'm talking to me here. I'm I'm talking to myself. I mean, it's like when a prophet prophesies to themselves, you know. <laughs> I'm but I'm I'm challenged by this right this notion right now of of just this is all hands on deck, and you don't need listen if you I it's good to find a church that is on yes of course you want to find a church that is on fire for God, but maybe it starts with you. Yeah. Maybe you're going to be grab three friends and that is the church. Um, maybe it's just a small gathering in your house of people on fire for God that are hungry for his presence. And that's the start. This this I'm here with Larry Sparks, but the spark <laughs> of just igniting your your city. Um, I want to ask, ask you, Larry, what does it cost? What would you say is part of paying the price? Um do you have I'll, any thoughts about that? Yeah, I'll give you one. I mean, word. you shared a little bit, but I would love if you had anything else. I, I think oh, I, I, there, there's one word that's coming to me, but just kind of preempting that. I think it costs reputation. It costs this idea of what will people think of me? Because again, I'm like, well, people mm. already know that I'm like charismatic Pentecostal. But again, I, I try to do my best um, to present I don't know, an air of put togetherness in the sense of I want to be intellectually honest. I want to be theologically sound. I believe in those things. But then, of course, you get a video shared out there of you like looking like you've been electrocuted by the power of God. And mm -hmm. uh, but I said, God, it's and I felt like he said, no, that that must stay up there. And I'm like, why, God? You know, it's like any last remaining piece of this idea of uh, of dignity and he's like yeah it, it, that's a, that's what it costs are are you willing but any leader i think of who's truly worth their weight um the, the, they've paid that price it's like god I, I, i'll look like a fool for you and it doesn't mean he wants us to be goofy but it means at the end of the day that we are extremely pliable to him that we are um people who are yielded to him but i i would say the great thing that it costs and to me, yes, it costs, but oh goodness, it's it's worthwhile because it's an adventure. It costs settling. I felt like the Lord gave me mm -hmm. one word when you asked me that question. It costs settling because what's happened is so often, even in revival culture, even a charismatic Pentecostal world that we're part of, we can experience a wonderful move of the Holy Spirit. Um, and I think this is what has killed some revivals. And you get to a place where it's like, you know what, we'll settle here and we'll hmm. kind of build here. And obviously there's times where God has us stay or camp somewhere for a little while because he wants to do something, he wants to teach us something, whatever. But God is all about from glory to glory. And I, I really believe we need to live motivated by the sense that I'm not, listen, as long as I'm breathing, like you said, Anna, I don't know how much time I have, um, but here's one, here, here's one thing I know. I'm not really responsible for tomorrow or yesterday. 
just track with me for a minute. I'm responsible. This is why I so I love Anna that you use that phrase off the right now because guess what? We're responsible for right now. I don't know if I could tolerate any more of this language saying, oh, the glory is coming or revival is coming or this is coming. I mean, we've had the revival's coming conference and the glory's coming summit. And I, I get it. And, and I understand mm -hmm. a greater release or a manifestation of those things is yet to come. But I believe all the machinery, everything that we need from heaven to walk in the power of God has been given to us. And I think the Lord, again, I think I said this before, Tim Sheet said that the Lord said to Tim, listen, you raise the bar, I'll raise the anointing. Wow. He said, you raise the bar, the us. We, wow, that's so good. You raise the bar. What's the bar? The Bible is the bar. And I was having a conversation with my wife, Mercedes, about this. And I was explaining that to her. And God bless her. She always she talked about people who provoked me. She's like, no, 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 no. I Because I was like, well, the bar would be healing sick, casting out devils, raising the dead. Man, that's a pretty high bar. And she said, that's true. But what else did Jesus say in the, in the book of John? He said, greater works. I mean, there, oh, there, there is a bar of things that we have not yet seen. There, there is a, I mean, so the, the, the reality is this, the good news is this, you never, I, I just declare this over you right now, you never have to settle. You never have to settle for some stale, stagnant Christianity. The Lord told me this, he said, I'm declaring war on the, on the deception of backsliding. And I said, what does that mean? He said, uh, there's a generation, particularly young people, not only young people, but young people, we have this language, well, they, they're backsliding and the prodigals or that. They've gone away from the Lord. And I feel like the Lord is saying, one of the ways that I'm going to actually save a generation from backsliding is I'm going to raise up people. This is why I take what we do so seriously, taking uh, preaching and messages and books. I feel like the Lord is saying, I'm going to remind a generation there's more. I'm going to constantly remind them that there's more and that the there, that there is no ceiling. Sometimes I think people are told or are given this idea: well, you got saved, you signed a card, you came forward. Uh, uh, okay, now go to church every week, maybe a couple times a week. Maybe you'll go on a missions trip a couple of times. Do your best, try to live holy, and then when you die, you'll go to heaven. Um, that that's not Christianity. Jesus, Corey Russell says this, Jesus did not die for 45 minutes and 20 bucks. He didn't die for once a week and, and a offering in the offering plate. Um, he, he, wow. He died for a people who are completely consumed. And I'll say this and then I think I'm done, but, um, you never have to settle. In fact, for those of you who are right now, it's legal to kind of assess where we are. Mm -hmm. and, and measure it next to the Bible. And we don't say this in guilt. We don't say it in shame. We say it with joyful expectation. What I'll, I'll, I'll do, ho, oh, is I'll look at people in the Bible like Peter, who was so saturated with the presence of God in the book of Acts that his shadow healed the sick. Or Paul, who they took pieces of clothing from his body. It wasn't like prayer cloths. It was like pieces of clothing from his body, so saturated in the presence of God that those pieces of cl clothing would heal the sick, cast out demons. I right. say, God, that's the bar. I'm not there. I recognize what I have right now. It's not enough. Um, and Lord, I'm going to make your word the bar. That's going to be the standard. And what do we do? It's like, oh, Larry, but what do we do to get there? Uh, we ask. We pray. That, that is the thing that actually fills in the gulf, the gulf between where we are right now. And I believe everything the Bible says is available. That is why I believe making space for the Holy Spirit and prayer. Like prayer is absolutely essential. And I, I, I really believe the Holy Spirit's highlighting yeah. that right now. Because um, sometimes, and again, I, I think I've done, but I, I feel like we'll, we'll get somewhere in the spirit sometimes. We'll pray. We'll get to a place of power, signs, wonders, miracles, or whatever. And then it's almost like we back up on the prayer or we back off on the prayer. Yeah. Um, no, we, we live in a place of prayer and it's not static. It's not dull. It's not religious and it's not boring. It is a lifestyle of constant communion engagement with a real person called God. You know, I have a few thoughts is if that's okay, I'm just yes. going to jump in Larry, but, um, a few things that I was thinking about as you were talking. Um, one thing is this: I've been in, I've been in meetings 
where the presence is so thick. And now I'm a seer, so I can see. Uh, I could see angel, angel, you know, presence. I, I I can see what's kind of going on in the room, but the presence is so thick. And yet I feel there's this almost, you can feel the tension in the room of almost like people waiting, waiting for something to break out. And I'm like, it's here. <laughs> I'm yeah. like, ah, like I'm like everything in me is like burning on the inside. And I'm like, what are we waiting for? Like, what are we waiting for? He's here. And, and now I know that there's, there's, um, in, in looking in the history of revival, there's, um, places that were highlighted where there's an unrecognizable, I mean, it's just a move of God where people as they're driving up into the parking lots are getting healed, are getting, you know, even, people that aren't believers are just drawn to it because they're drawn to the presence of God. I mean, we have seen that in history. Um, and I'm, I'm not saying that God can't do that now. And he's doing that where there's certain places where he's breathing on, but at the same time, um, I guess, I don't know how I'm explaining my frustration tonight, but I'm just being really honest. Um, I remember when we were, Larry, you and I, we were ministering yeah. on Sid Roth's show. You know the memory oh, yeah. I'm talking I, about. I, I very and, um, we, it was, you guys can go back and watch it probably on YouTube. Um, it was for a, a, the book we wrote together, Accessing the Greater Glory. And we are on his set and we got a chance to minister to the, the audience that was there, which sometimes you don't always get to do that. Yeah. Um, but it was like an extra like footage. They allowed time for it. They made room for just time and for us to do that. And we're there ministering with Sid and the presence. Oh my goodness. It was one of those experiences where I thought the, the roof, this studio is going to rip apart. I mean, I like the presence was so thick. The fire of God was so thick in that room. And yet I could feel that tension there yeah. of, of people. I'm not trying to judge them. I'm not saying that, but, and I was like, he's here. You know, everything in me just wanted to scream. He's here. He's here. He's here. We don't have to wait. We don't have like, like guys, like the veil was torn. Right. So we don't have to sit behind and think, well, we, you and I, we can't get, that close. I believe he's drawing us into a new measure, a new level of closeness with his presence. I really do. And I, I know the scripture that says we're seated in heavenly places. Well, if you and I are seated in heavenly places, as that word says, then we have the ability to be right close to him. And you don't have to wait for somebody to pray for you. Now, Larry and I are going to pray for you, of course, but you don't have to have us pray for you. Here's the truth. Jesus paid the price for you, for you, for you on here, Alicia, for you on here, Logan, for you, Carol, for you, Janet, for you, Joe. Jesus paid so that he could be that close to you. Nothing you can do is going to make you perfect enough. Listen, you can lay that down, your imperfections. Lay it down. It's okay. Jesus loves you so much that he says, you were worth dying and giving my life for you, just so you and I could experience that closeness. Does anybody feel the tears? I just feel like the oh of God right now. There, you had something to add. I, I, I have a very specific word, actually, that the Lord gave me. I was looking at the comments. Um, this is somebody who's been on multiple videos that we've done. Vera Vosnik is her name. Um, oh, Vera, yeah. Yeah, Vera, I actually feel like the Lord has you. And, and this is not entirely prophetic, because obviously I know Facebook and I see what you do. Because um, I believe you attend a Church of God church. I, believe, I think you sing there. Again, not prophetic, just <laughs> social media. But I feel like the Lord is saying, Vera, you're a well digger. 
Shoraba, I feel the fire of God on that. Vera, you are you have access, I believe, to that Pentecostal fire. It's literally, I just see it. I, I, I've never been to that church before, um, but I see it like in the ground. I see a, the front of that church like this altar space. And I see literally like the fire of Pentecost in the ground. And the Lord's given you wisdom. He's given you discernment. He's obviously given you a voice there. I believe you are called to just be a breaker in that place. The Lord's actually raising up breakers. People who say, you know, people who are basically saying what Anna's saying, we're not going to wait. These are the people right now, honestly, whether it's Fresh Start Church or The Ramp or Todd Smith. These are people saying, you know what? We're not waiting on God. What? Of course, we wait on God for certain things. But I think of the woman with the issue of blood. That was the illustration I used when we were on Sid. She didn't wait around for Jesus. Mm -hmm. She heard about Jesus and she, she said to herself, if I touch him. If I, so I, I feel like the Lord is just raising up a people who, who are just desperate enough to reach out and touch him and say, Lord, I will reach out to you. I'll go where you're going. And, and the Lord says, even now, one of the, the key place I am is in the word. I, I, I saw a comment before. I think, I don't know if it was like a nice comment or sarcastic comments. Like if you want to encounter God, read the Bible. Um, and, 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 and I get a lot of those things. Obviously in the charismatic Pentecostal world, and people think, oh, all they talk about is the Holy Spirit. But that comment is true. And the Lord says, Lord. for those of you who are hungry, even now, just reach out to my word. But the Lord says, I'm giving you a new lens. Man, we're in something right now. I'm giving you new, a new lens in how you read the Bible. Where, who, when you read the Bible, you see the bar. When you read the word, you see the bar of what is your inheritance. Like I said, that Tim Sheets thing, you raise the bar, God will raise the anointing. In other words, we look at the Bible and say, God, this is accessible. That's what we're talking about. This is available. This is accessible. Holy Spirit, show me how to reach out for and walk in every one of these things that you have promised. Um, but yeah, Vera, again, back to you. I just feel like the Lord has raised you up to be a, a well digger. You're actually digging those wells of Pentecost in that church. In Jesus' name. The, the other thing, um, and I love that there, but the other thing that you had said that I thought was so powerful and I'm like, everything in me was like, yes, when you said make room. Yeah. Um, that's such a key. And I know personally that in my times with the Lord, nobody knows I'm here in my office. It's like four in the morning because I'm ridiculous. And that's the time I get up with the Lord. But I'm here with the Lord and I might come to him with my agenda, if you will. Um, things that are on my heart, things that maybe is going on in the ministry, um, things that I'm carrying because I, I carry a lot of people that I pray for. And I have all these things in my mind. And I've heard him say, literally, I've heard the phrase, would you make room for me, yeah. Anna? Just stop, stop. And he literally has to say, stop. Would you make room for me? Yeah. And I'm like, it's not that those things aren't, aren't important, but what is the most important is that I could fix my eyes on him yeah. and connect my spirit to him, to plug into him. Because frankly, I can't get the right perspective on any of the situations unless I'm able to plug into him. There's a scripture I wanted to read. Speaking of reading the word, yeah. um, there's a scripture that I was thinking as we were sharing, but um, I just feel like this is for someone for you. And this is in Isaiah 41. Um, and it, this is in the Passion Translation. Um, did you know the Passion Translation, the Isaiah, like they did the book of Isaiah? I just, just like, I'm old to discover this, but I, I just discovered it's really good. So I love, I, um, and I love the notes that Brian has in the little yes. like, commentary. Like, yes. I know I read, every, but mm -hmm. okay. So this is verse uh, 10. I'm like, where are my glasses when I need them? Hold on. <laughs> All right. Do not yield to fear for I'm always near. Never turn your gaze for from me, for I am your faithful God. I will infuse you. He will infuse you with his strength and help you in every situation. I will hold you firmly with my victorious right hand. 
I'm just going to pray and Larry, please jump in because I can feel um, the glory. I can feel the presence so thick that we need to just move to minister and yep. pray for those of you on here. Um, is that okay with you, Larry? Yes, please. <laughs> I just, I'm like, let's just go for it. Yep. Okay. So <sighs> father in Jesus name, we come before you Lord. And we just thank you, Jesus. God, we don't know it all. We don't have the ABC rhythm, algorithm of how to get more of you, get more of your presence. I think I have ways, but God, I know that you have more. I know that you have more. Father, in Jesus' name, I just pray that you would pour your presence out over everyone watching this right now. Some of you uh, I just declare the peace of Christ, the shalom peace of Christ into every situation that is going on specifically in your household right now. I declare peace into the very storm. And would you have faith that he can change something even overnight? He can change something even overnight. I just saw um, a couple of circumstances that are going on in the homes. If this is a very specific prophetic word, but in your home, and I saw his hand change attitudes and things that are going on in the home, even overnight. Father, I just pray, would you have your way? Would you have your way? Well, this is very interesting because I don't usually get very specific words like this, but I actually feel like the Lord is releasing his presence right now in a home where there is a father, specifically the father in this household is dealing with alcoholism. There's not abuse. There's mm -hmm. none, none of that. But literally, it's like the dad is turning to alcohol because it's almost like he's trying to self-medicate. But I pray right now, wow, in the name of Jesus, that that is broken and that he would actually taste of the goodness of God. So I, I, I come into, I'm not going to ask whoever that is. If you want to message us, that's fine. This is a private, personal thing. But the Lord gave me that very specific word. And I want to encourage you, again, whoever is navigating that situation, uh, just I, I want to even encourage you, just pray over the household because the Lord says, I want to fill that house with the presence, my presence, and darkness will get very uncomfortable. Um, and then for another person, I actually feel like the Lord, there, there might be a couple of people, but you've literally told God, all right, I want to speak in tongues or I want to pray in tongues. It is biblical. Yes, there is speaking in tongues where somebody gets a prophetic message and it needs an interpreter. 1 Corinthians 12, 100%. But then there's 1 Corinthians 14, which talks about a private personal prayer language. I don't need to teach you on it. You've already, I feel like you've already gotten the teaching. And I feel like even now, on a, just in this atmosphere of presence, like a river, it's going to come out of at least a couple of people where you're like, I want to pray in tongues. And again, doesn't mean you're more special. Doesn't mean you're more spiritual. But you're saying, I want it. Father, wow, right now, I just ask that that well would be uncapped and that you would just start praying. Don't make it up. Don't manufacture something. Just say, thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. And whatever those syllables are, even if it's one with my wife, it was like one or two syllables when she got filled with, baptized by the Spirit. Even if it's that, practice the few and then just more comes. But I I, I believe the Lord saying these things specifically. Wow, I don't, I don't usually get this kind of stuff, but we're... Or something. Um, I have a word for someone on here. Um, you went, as you've heard us, and you you might be watching this actually later, and it might come up on your YouTube channel or something like that. You might be on here right now. But you're saying, I want to know the living God yeah. like this. I want to feel uh -huh. the tangible presence of God. I've had enough of hearing about him. I want to physically feel. Feel him. I'm tired of pressing in and pushing after him, but not feeling or sensing anything. And um, I mean, I feel this so strong, like I'm gripped with this word right now, um, that 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 in this very moment, in this very moment, if you would close your eyes, listen, just do it with me. Those of you who have had a dose of the Lord, just do it with me anyways. We all need him. Close your eyes. Get very still. Sometimes that's the hardest part. Holy Spirit, come. 
breathe afresh right now. Who breathe afresh upon us right now? <laughs> we thank you, Lord. We thank you, Jesus. If you don't know Jesus, I want you just to pray after me. This is your moment. You got you stumbled upon this. You're like, I don't even know why I'm watching this. But there's something they're talking about that's resonating. You know, it's resonating you because you've always wanted to know God. And, and, and you're like, I'm sick of just hearing about him. I want to know him. Yeah. Just pray with me. It, it, it doesn't matter where you're at. Listen, it doesn't matter if you're leading the absolute, you're in the worst pit of your life. You're addicted to drugs. You're doing things you know that is not good and not of God. You know what? Jesus still loves you. Just pray, God, I need you. I'm a sinner. I believe, Jesus, that you are the way, you are the only way to heaven. And I ask you to come into my life right now. Forgive me, God, yeah. for my sins and just wash me clean. Please just, just take the reins. I need you, God, to be the Lord of my life right now. And now if you prayed that prayer, oh, someone I know, you're, someone on here, you're going to share this with your, your daughter, your son, your niece, your nephew. I, I just know that's about that's going to happen and they're going to get touched by the Lord. But if you just pray that prayer, guess what? Your name is written in the book of life, yeah. in the book of heaven. And that means that someday I get to see you. <laughs> I get to meet you in heaven and heaven is cheering you on. And this is your fresh new day. This is your fresh start of life. And you're going to know you're the best friend of your whole life. You're going to know Jesus. And it's it's going to change your life. I'm telling you, my friend, your life is never going to be the same now. And those of you as well, you want, I, I want to pray this as well. And Larry, jump in if you have anything to say. But you want an increased, I just heard this to pray. I'm going to pray in Jesus' name. I pray the release and importation of the increased sensitivity to the Holy Spirit. Yeah. That we would know, Holy Spirit, what you're saying, yeah. where you're going, where you're moving. Just increase our sensitivity yeah. to feel and sense you, Lord, when you're in the room, God, I pray for blockages yeah. that have been there to be removed because some of you, it's not just like, oh, well, I've got sin mm. and that's why it's blocking me. That is the number one thing that blocks us from being able to feel his presence. But there is bit literal, literally, I can't talk, a, like a spiritual warfare around you from being able to hear his voice, to see him clearly. It's been like a fog over you. So Father, in Jesus name, I just pray for that fog to be lifted off. Yes. And I thank you, Jesus. Um, I just hear that whom the sun, like, it's like the song I'm not going to sing, but whom the sun says free is free indeed. I hear it over and over. So I just pray. And I thank you God for freedom, 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 and the ability to sense you again. Thank you, Lord. I, and I do want to encourage you guys, if if literally some of these specific words are for you, I'm, I mean, if you are comfortable, you can share it, but you can share. I mean, I, I'd, I'd love, please. I mean, just so I'm like, okay, am I hearing the Lord? Uh, you could send the messages. Yeah. I actually feel like the Lord is saying to somebody named Carolyn, C-A-R-O-L-Y-N, um, just you're hungry for more. And the very, wow, the very fact that the Lord called out your name um, and spelt it that way. I, I, you know, and sometimes people like to take the word and be like, well, mine is spelled differently. No, no, no. If it's C-A-R-O-L-Y-N, I believe the Lord's like, I know your name. Ha, huh. I know your name and I see you and I love you. And in fact, I saw a picture and I, I don't know the name here, but I see somebody in a dorm room, uh, a college, it could be a dorm room, college apartment. Um, and, uh, it's almost like I, I see people sharing this broadcast and somehow this gets to you and it's like, what in the world am I watching? And yet something in your spirit is really resonating. And I want to encourage you. This is evidence that God is after you. I, I, and that may not sound like the best thing in a good way. This is evidence. The fact that you're watching this right now and maybe you're struggling with stuff. Maybe you're far from God. 
Well, the Lord says, the fact that you're watching this means I'm near to you. The fact that you're watching this means I'm, <laughs> he says, you're, you, it's, been, it's a setup. It, it's a setup. And I actually believe as you continue to watch right now, and I'm going to finish praying, Holy Spirit, wow, would you just fall? Fall with power. God, fall. I, I, I almost was going to sanitize the prayer a little bit on it, but the Lord's like, no, 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 Larry. No, mm -hmm. Don't sanitize it. Um, listen, whatever it looks like, that's great. We need the power of God. We need the fire of God that when it touches somebody, something happens. And why? I'll tell you this. I'll end with this little story at Norman's Church in South Florida. I for, there was a gathering we did. You, you and I might have done this one. I forget. But it was one of the most profound things I ever saw because I knew the family. They actually went to the local, I believe they went to the local Catholic church, love Jesus, but they came to our gatherings. And I remember this mom had her, had her daughter and the daughter, again, these are normal. I remember this. I was there. You were there. Yes, were yes, there. yes. Um, normal people. These are not like people doing cartwheels and somersaults. These are normal put together people that I know. And I watched the daughter there. She was on the altar with a smile, a smile on her face. She was probably eight or nine shaking and trembling under the power of God. And I went over to her and I'm like, God, I don't even know how to pray for her. I don't even know how to touch this. God, it was, ho it was so holy. And the Lord gave me words to pray. And he said, pray that this would be her argument against the devil one day. Whoa. And I pray that over you, that the touch of God would be so, would so mark your life that when the enemy comes in with his like false bill of goods, with temptation and sin, that you'd remember... Yeah, but but God's real. He's alive. He touches people. He does mm -hmm. do what the book of Isaiah says. He rends the heavens. He tears open the heavens and he comes down. He's a real God. And I believe he's doing that. And I actually believe we're going to see um, fruit. We're going we're gonna to hear stories from people who watch this in the aftermath or in the archive. Uh, just because I believe he so wants to touch and mark your life. Praise God. Yeah. Well, Larry, I'm so grateful that you came on here and just were willing to thank you for your vulnerability to just share um, how God's marked you, what he's the message that's just burning in your heart. And, you know, I appreciate I mean, obviously, you don't you don't really care about your reputation because everyone's now going to go watch the video <laughs> of you getting touched by the Holy Spirit. <laughs> but I really appreciate just just you jumping on here. And I think Larry and I, before we let you guys go, there's an event coming up. We would like to invite oh, yeah. you guys to. Um, so Larry, would you mind sharing yes. about that? Cause it's coming up in August, but August. you could probably give better details than I can. Cause you I, probably know more details. <laughs> I, 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 I do. I do. Um, August, I believe it's 20th and the 21st. It's a Friday and mm -hmm. Saturday in Peoria, Arizona, it's the Phoenix area at Fresh Start Church, this church we've been talking about. I felt like the Lord said, I want you to gather together people whose eyes are seeing revival, whose eyes are seeing the move of God. This is not a conference. I, I, I'm not against conferences. This is not a conference. It's going to be free. Um, only thing we might have you do, and we're still putting it together, is, is registration, but it's free Mark it on your calendar. You are welcome to come. It is a time. I, and here's what we're calling it. We're calling it Pentecostal fire, redigging the wells of God's Pentecostal power. Um, and again, it's not just for the Pentecostal church. I, I believe the cool thing about Fresh Start Church is it is a Pentecostal church and they are redigging the wells of their assemblies of God roots. What I believe is going to happen as a result of this is that fire is going to be transferred and released to people who watch and come, but also a synergy is going to happen between all the different revivalists because you're going to be there. I think of mm -hmm. Karen Wheaton, Todd Smith, Jesse Green. I, I think of uh, Paul and Kim Owens. At first, when I was trying to do this event, I was hoping everybody would say no because then I'd be off the hook. I, I literally, I was like, God, this is too big. I don't like big yes. things where, where I have to pay the bill. Um, but but I, I literally sent out an email like that day Everybody was like, yes, we're, we're, we're all in. Knowing full well, this is not a big conference with all sorts of registration. We're coming to pray. Um, we're coming yeah. to contend. And uh, yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to that. So August 20th and 21st, Fresh Start Church in Phoenix, Arizona. And is just questions I have about that, just for those of us 
um, there'll be more information coming out yes as yep. like a registry is made um yep. is this going to be some so because i know people are going like where's the link where can i find out information about that um is is this something that's going to be live streamed in case people can't yes. um financially yep. make the trip out there it will be it will be live streamed again i know this is not good marketing sure. it's all free it's all going to be free. I'm not right. going to have a charge, but yes, it'll be probably live streamed through our Destiny Image YouTube page. And, um, and then probably also with Fresh Start. We're doing this. This is not, I'm going to go use their building. Like Kim and Paul Owens at Fresh Start Church, we're all in. Like we're, we're, we're doing her book, Doorkeepers of Revival, comes out in August. So we're all in with them. I, I believe what they carry is so needed and God wants to release this fire uh, across the United States. So yeah, it's free. If anything, I, I in terms of where to find this, you, you can go right now to my, I, I haven't widely publicized it yet because I'm still finalizing the list of people who right. are coming. Um, but again, I, I, I even, I only list the people, not because, oh, you know, we got all these celebrities, just people who know Revive, mm -hmm. John and Carol Arnett are going to be there, Jeremiah Johnson, Patricia King, people who know and who have tasted of the move of God. And I think something powerful is going to happen when we come into agreement together. So, yeah, it's everyone who's going to be there desperately wants God yeah. um, and only God. And I love that about everyone that's coming to it. And there's lots of people from different streams coming together, yes. which makes me happy too. And, and it yep. just feels like heaven. So, anyways, yes. um, I will be as well posting things about this event on my website, which is onawarner.org. It's in the link there at the top. Um, as I know, details, as you can tell, we're trying to figure things out, but it yes. will, you can at least mark your calendar when the registry becomes available. I will definitely send it out. Um, if you're new to my page, there's a way to as well join my newsletter. And I, I regularly update people. Um, I don't send you junk in the mail. Please don't don't worry about that. But I do let you know in advance about things uh, coming up. So this would be something that I would send you information on. But um, any last thoughts? I had also I want to mention something about Larry that people don't maybe know. Um, Larry also has uh, this incredible course that I kind of like a lot of us like pushed on him to like, come on, Larry, when are you going to do this? When are you going to do did. this? But um, he's got this incredible course. If you're thinking about writing a book and you want tips and advice from um, the publisher himself, yeah. you offer an online course. Did you want to share at all about that? I'm like helping you. I'm like, you're very kind. Help, you tell are... people because nobody knows. If, I don't know. Not nobody knows. I'm sorry. That sounds really rude, but no, people but might true. not actually know who are on this because you don't promote it a lot. So I'm I, like, I, yes. let's be real. I'm, I'm praying into how to do that. But uh, yeah, no, you were one of the people who really helped provoke me to do this. Um, well, my, my question, every time I go to a conference, I say, how many people feel called to write a book or you feel like you've got a prophetic word? I mean, even on this chat now, I'm sure so many people want to release their story and they just don't quite know the next step. I put together a course that will help you at least have clarity in the next step, writing your book, how to structure it, how to put together a winning book proposal, all of that type of thing. And it's called onepagepublishingplan.com. Um, one as in O-N-E. But yeah, onepagepublishingplan.com. And that's where I have the whole online course. And the goal is by the time you're done to have all the information you need to get going on your book and then have information to present if you wanted to traditionally publish or publish with a publisher, you have all the right information for a book proposal. Onepagepublishingcourse.com. Plan.com. Plan. Yeah. See, if I was more better at this, let's do this. I'm going to create a page. Okay. One page publishing course. One page publishing plan. I know. Plan. I know. What's wrong with me? Plan. That's not, it's all right. It's dot com. Of, Is that it? Dot com. One. Yep. One page. Okay. Let's see what happens. Plan. Let's see. Let's see. If I see. do it, did I do it right? N no. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there it is. One. Did page. I spell it right? That is correct. Plan.com. Okay. <laughs> so, because I'm like thinking, I'm not doing a good job at like. Helping no, you, you promote did this. So, oh, no, no, just in fine. case you guys want information about You're that, that. I appreciate up. it. Um, as well, I'm just gonna say one thing. Um, 
I'll keep that on the screen. But in the month of May, uh, many of you may know this or not know this, but I'm doing a SEER school online. Ooh. If you are interested, um, last year alone, I mentored over 1,200 students. And I regularly, I just check in with my students. I always stand in a place of mentoring them if they have questions after they take the course. It's a month long course um, and it is powerful. Oh my goodness, we have so much fun. We go so deep into encountering the Lord and seeing even healing, deliverance. Um, what's a seer? How is this biblical? How do I know if I'm hearing the voice of God or is this just me? It's all covered in that. So I encourage you just to check that out. Um, and that is on my website, which is honorwarner.org. You can go see that the month of May. It is filling up, though, because I I honestly do cap it because I, I don't want it to grow so big that I can't feel like I'm personally mentoring you and I can't answer your questions. So um, just throwing that out there. But anyways, enough about all the stuff that we're doing. Um, we love Jesus. We hope that this conversation encouraged you tonight. You felt a fresh um, just refreshment of yeah. the Lord um, during this time. And hey, it doesn't stop. It doesn't stop now. Just as you turn this off, I want to encourage you just to get out your Bible, go put on some worship music, maybe just go get your journal and just go soak in his presence yeah. and just continue asking Holy Spirit, come and and. Uh, some of you might even physically need to go lay down <laughs> um, because that helps sometimes just to physically lay down and, and feel that weighty um, presence. And I know it's just con going to continue. So thank you guys for joining me. Larry, thank you, yes. my friend. This is always an honor to have you oh, yeah. on here. Is there any last thoughts you had? I didn't mean to cut you off or anything, but... No, no. The only other thing I was going to say, and again, this is a little, this is a product thing. It's not mine though. Um, it's a book. This is probably one of the most impacting books in my life for 10 years uh, in terms of something that will provoke you, push you, stir your hunger. It's called Doorkeepers of Revival by Kim Owens. Um, I think right now the only place you can get it is Kim Owens' website, but we're working with her to publish that come August. So it is available now. It'll be more available in the days ahead, but that the, there are books that wreck you. Um, I think of God Chasers by Tommy Tenney. I think of When Heaven Invades Earth, like those books yeah. that have catalyzed movements of God. I, I just wanted to mention that not as a product placement. It's not my product. Um, it's 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 something that has really huh, been responsible for where I am right now. So Come on. Yeah. All right. Thank you. That's awesome. Well, guys, I hope you have a blessed evening. I hope I hope this really touched you. I want you to feel encouraged. Um, that the presence of God, the power of God, the deutimous power of God is for you. It's available for you right now. Not something you have to wait for. It's not something you have to build yourself up for. God is so, listen, he is so passionately in love with you. I am convinced that he is trying to invade every aspect of your day to get your attention and just say, Hey, I know you, I care about you and I'm so for you. Would you come here and sit with me? Let's have a chat heart to heart. Um, so father in Jesus name, I just pray now your blessing just to flow over this live stream on those who are watching this, those who are going to watch this later. May they feel encouraged that you are for them, not against them that they hear, they can hear your voice clearly and they have purpose and destiny for their lives. I thank you, Jesus. Amen and amen. Guys, thank you for joining me and I, take care. We'll see. I'm going to do another one of these, um, I think in two weeks. Um, so I'm looking forward to that, but have